Good morning, my name is Jean Edwards and I'm here to chat with Helen Hart a little bit about what she remembers about Cortland. So, what's your favorite place? That's a good question. <laughs> you were talking about the park, tell me about the park. Well, Suggett Park, when I moved in there in 1950, was real busy. They had a cop in there that was with the kids, Joe Pearson his name was. You won't right now. You no, won't. I don't. He was a, an older man, but the kids loved him, but he wouldn't, you know, no, he just got along with the kids and they just kept watch of them, made sure they were all right. Did you play in the park every day as a kid? Not me. My kids did. My three kids played there. Then they used to set up the skating in the winter. There was a building next to a, a the basketball court, and they had a um, stove, something like that one, in there. Okay. And they built a fire, and the kids would ice skate out there. Uh, on the on the basketball court. Yep, they'd come up and freeze it, and the kids would. The place was. I got pictures of it someplace. Pretty neat. And, but that's they don't do that anymore either, so. You were saying a minute ago why you thought, partly why you thought they didn't do things like that anymore. Well, the reason the kids, I, I do think the reason the kids aren't out there is because they got these, what do you call it? Phones and Phones tablets. that they're playing with. And, and it's too bad because they're not outdoors like they used to be. And of course. How about the pool? Your kids play in the liquor? My pool? kids used to learn to swim in that pool that was built in 1948. At that time, when they built it, Earl and I lived on Homer, 88 Homer Avenue, across from where we are now. And then we bought this house. So the kids learned to swim out there. And it, it, we used to see the kids even going by our house, but now you, it's very, it's nothing like it used to be. You know, you don't see it. Of course, people that can't trust their kids out alone anymore. That's the sad part, too. I agree with that, because when we were kids, we just go... I mean, like going to wherever. school. They used to be walk to school. When you think about it, they got real good friendships walking to school together. Now they can't walk to school. They can't, they can't trust, the, not the kids, but they can't trust letting them out of their sight. Sad. What do you like most about Portland? Why have you stayed here? <laughs> that wouldn't sound very good. Why? Well, I've yeah. lived here all my life. I was born on Star Road, right next door to where Kathy lives now. Okay. It was my grandparents' house. And then when I was nine, we moved to South Cortland, and that's where Daddy owned a farm out there with 148 acres both sides of the road. And that's where, well, where Walmart is. I used to help pick potatoes off that lot when I was a kid. How I was did, either in the house helping my mother or I was outdoors helping my father. How much did they pay you for picking up potatoes? Daddy used to give us, uh, what was, I can't remember, probably a penny a bushel, but we had the money to go to the fair with. That was a lot of money. You only needed a dollar and you could spend all day at the fair. The Cortland Fair? The Cortland Junior Fair that we yep. have now? Similar? But now we just have to have a hundred, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was 12, is when the 35 flood took place. But I don't know anything about that. And I stood by the road and watched my father and the men go across the road and drag out the young stock. There's a barn over there and he had some young stock over there. And the water come down through him and he, I watched him pull them out and that water never came over the road. It's amazing. 
This was where Walmart is now? Is this yep, the that whole flat. That was in the 1935 flood, and that was a bad one. I was 12 years old, but I can remember. So I wasn't surprised when that place got filled up with water. Oh, the flood. Because all that water yeah. comes from Virgil. There's a creek. The other side that comes down through on the other side of where that well, what is that they call that housing project where the sick people Walton Place. Well, yeah. Walton Place. Yeah, yeah, back in there there's a creek that comes and that all comes from Virgil. Talk to me about changes in Corland since the late fifties. Changes? Yeah. What, what changes do you remember? What do I remember? There's no main street where you can go to the five and tens, no place to shop. True. Did you ever There's so home? many shopping places that, and half of them are empty. That's sad. Mm -hmm. And yet they want to spend thousands of dollars to change the traffic around on main street for what? They've done it. In the 50s, wh which way did the traffic go? Was it one way? It was probably two-way, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. But at the country, it was a different situation now than we got now. There wasn't as many cars. So what was on Main Street? What do you remember? Five and tents and dress shops and men's stores. And just a lot of good places. You could do all your Christmas shopping down there. I did, a couple of times. No, you can't. Well, if you want a tattoo or get drunk, you can go down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not nice, but that's the truth. I think Sheridan's is about the That's last. all that's down there. <laughs> it's sad. And yet they say, keep go, come down there. I wouldn't dare go down there, especially at night. I go to the post office and a bank and that's, I'm out of there. Well. You probably eat down there, out the community, no? No, I don't go there anymore either. Do you go out to eat? Not very often. I go out to Applebee's if I do with the boys. Mm -hmm. I don't... I don't go out very much. Church. That's my main place. That stayed the same for a long time. <laughs> well, I went to Memorial Baptist Church for years. Things happen. Which one is the Memorial Baptist Church? Tompkins Street. They changed the name of it now. They, they hired a minister on the internet and he, he took care of the place. Whoa. <laughs> I was there, I said, well, one day he said to me, how long have you been here? I said, since before I was born. <laughs> so, so, that ended that conversation. So where'd you meet your husband? At a square dance in Groton. Really? Yep. McElhaney is the name of the place. Great place to square dance. Was it a dance hall? Yep. Yeah. They had a lot of dances back then. He had a farm, Mr. McElhaney had a farm there, and he was too old to farm it much, and he, so he turned his barn into a place for square dancing. We used to have great times over there. Yeah, that's where I met him. Where'd that was learn? in 1940. Where'd you learn to square dance? Who taught you to square dance? Probably there. <laughs> <laughs> the square dances are diff were different than they are now. I can't explain the difference, but they, diff they were different. I, I, I don't think I could do the modern ones they got. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just before World War II. What do you remember about the war years? World War II? Yeah. Did it affect you at all? Well, I lived in South Cortland. I remember the day Pearl Harbor was bombed. My father and my mother and another couple were playing cards. The radio was on. We were all sitting, all in the living room. 
And all of a sudden it came over the, on the radio that Pearl Harbor had bombed us, you know, the, the Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor. My poor father, I didn't know. It was just terrible. That was in what? 19? 41. One. December of 41, yeah. Yeah, because I graduated in 42, yeah. And uh, he just couldn't, Daddy, of course, he was all ready to go. To, in 1918, he'd been called to go when they signed the armistice, so he didn't have to go. He was probably too old. And then, well, he was 40, 44, 43 when this, no, 44 he was. And uh, I was married, I graduated in June. I was married four days after graduation, <laughs> and my father died the 24th of August. Wow. He died young. The war really mm. affected him. He really was upset. What did your husband do? What was his work? He had a portable feed grinder when we were first married, and he went around to the farmers and ground their corn and stuff that they got for the feed. And then he got into the car business. He sold cars? Yep, used cars. Yep. Where was that? Oh, I can't remember. I think it was when we lived. No, like, where was the business? Located? Here in Cortland. Okay. Yep. And then he got where he got some trucks where he hauled cars for other dealers. And he loved it. Until he had his five bypasses, and after that, he never worked. So, did you always have your pick of cars? No, I got my own car and put my own plates and my own insurance on it. They all had a fit, and I said, It's mine, and you're not taking it. <laughs> I'm a very stubborn woman. I got sick of the car I was driving being taken out of the driveway, so I got my own. Doesn't that sound like me? It does. <laughs> so do you have any hope for the future for Cortland? I don't know. I hope, hope something's going to happen. It gets better. I don't know. I don't know how people feel about it, really. What, what do you think Cortland will look like in 20 years? If we don't get some better people running it. Did you read the paper last night? Not yet. We're going to run out of money. See, she knows it. She read it. We haven't got anybody that really knows what they're doing. I don't think, but that's my opinion. Do you think? We you need to replace the legislatures and then we need to replace the council. I don't care if they're Democrat or what they are, Republican or Democrat. That don't mean anything to me. I... You just want the right people in the job. Let's go go back to the business that uh, Diane ran, Hearts and Flowers, right? Yeah, she uh, went to school at Elford in the tech school, and she come back, and then they. Worked on it and got the flower shop started. It started out up on this end of Main Street, near Florentini, someplace in there. It was little. I but, remembered it the other end of uh, yeah, Main and she Street. She kept expanding and finally they bought that building down there. But she had a touch with flowers. She could. I remember when my daughter got married, she said to me, Can I do what I want to do with? Beverly's bouquet. I said, it's up to you and Beverly. So she put color in Beverly's bridal bouquet. It was the first time she'd ever done that. And it was absolutely beautiful, but she just had this touch with him. You, you knew it was her flowers that she, when you got them. She was just a 
great person. How many years what, did she have the business there? Oh, it seemed like quite a while. Kathy was a baby, born when they were uh, up on near the jewelry store there, because she had a playpen and area built special. And Kathy was right there in the in the flower room. shop with them most of the time. And Kathy's 50 now. Diane's been gone about four years, I guess. Is it four years? It's, it's been a while, yeah. The, the business stopped several years ago, though. She, she got out of the business. Yeah, she, she uh, her brother got in there and thinks I don't know what the situation was. I never, I never worked there or anything. My mother used to work there after she retired with Diane for a while. So what? What did you? Were you mostly an at-home mom? And Me? Yeah. I worked at Smith's Corona. Twenty years. Tell me about that. And then I worked. What'd you in do? In the car lot. What'd you do at Smith Corona? Ah, uh, tighten screws on typewriters. And examined typewriters to make sure they were ready to go. Inspected them. And then we got, they got what they call these machines to test the typewriter. And I worked on the machines where you put the typewriter in and run a sample that would tell you what was wrong with the typewriter. Were you at the plant in Groton or were you? I worked in Groton and I worked on the one at McLean Road there for a while before I left. I was a busy lady. <laughs> I always find it something to do. Did you like, did you enjoy that? Was it fun or was it a lot of work? Or? I don't know. There's a lot of people. I made a lot of friends. It was not a bad place. Just Were you on the bowling league? Hmm? Were you on their bowling league? I, I didn't bowl in Groton. I bowled in Cortland. Smith Corona had a team, didn't they? A bowling team? Or a I bowled with my mother for years until she couldn't bowl anymore. I had a team with her. Then I ended up bowling with my sister in law up in Homer. And I just decided I didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> but that, what other recreational things did you do? Anything else? You probably didn't play softball or baseball. No. I, did they? <laughs> Took my kids to all the football games in the half of town with me. Beverly played in the band, marching band. Ed was on the football team. We'd load the car up and away we'd go to all the football games. Where, where was, uh, where were the football games held? In, before Syracuse and Sayre. But in Cortland, where? All did, over. Where did where were, where did the teams play in Cortland? On uh, Randall Field. That, this is the high school Number? team you're talking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. high school team. A Randall Field. Until they went up on a hill. Yeah, this was before they built the new, the new, uh, the new. It's not new anymore, but the, the junior senior high school. Up I on think the, the biggest mistake they made when they went up there was take the junior high with them. I think they should have stayed in. Right down Central down. Avenue. The, the, the count, what's the county office building now was the junior high at the time, right? Never. They moved the whole thing up yeah. there. But and I think they should have kept the, but, but the seventh, eighth, and ninth grade down there. Now, were, were they, they were, the seventh, eighth, and ninth were at 60 Central Avenue. No. No. Nope, was the high school and the junior high together? All went up on the hill at the same time. But, on Central Avenue, was it 7 through 12, or what grades were? On Hill? No, no. it's on 6 Downtown. 7 through 12. Yeah, okay. So that's when they, um, you're saying that they should have split it then yes. and taken the higher grades up on the Hill and the lower ones at the... That's the way I always felt. They should have separated those, you know, that there's a lot of difference between 7, 8, and ninth graders and those other kids. Something happens there. They grow, they really grow fast between eight and nine. A lot of changes. Yeah. Did you go to school at that building? Where did you? I go? graduated in Central Land, oh, 1942. That's a long time ago. It is. Yep. Most of my class is gone. 
Larry Wright and Harry Davis and Every time I pick up the paper, I, we just lost Mr. Uh, what's his name? Oh, he was a good guy. He was what? What was the size of classes back then? We had there was 129 of us, and we graduated. Of course, some of them. Well, I guess it was 129 graduated, but some of the kids that should have graduated with us left and went in the war. And some of them quit because they had to help their families. But when we had our reunions, we started our reunions at 20 years. We used to invite the ones that left and went to work and the ones that went in the service. We, as far as we were concerned, we included them in our class. Oh, well, sure. Did you lose uh, classmates in the war? Eddie Stanfield, who I think was one of the first ones we lost. Yeah, I think he was one of the first ones. I can't remember all that got were lost, but I just remember because I guess he was the first one. Right. Yeah, a lot of the fellows from our class left right after Pearl Harbor was hit. Mm -hmm. now, did kids commonly go to college back in the day or no? Well, some of them went to college, a lot of them did. Did they go to Cortland? Oh, some of the boys that went to law school. Tommy Meldrum graduated with us. He went to law school. I, I don't, well, Larry went to Syracuse, I'm sure, because he was stayed in the business with his father. Bob Zimmer, all those, I think they all went to law school. Boy, son of boys. I was trying to get you to tell me more about the college and, and the relationship between the the, nor the local people and the college here in Cortland. I don't know how many people ever went up to Cortland. I really don't. You didn't ever go up there for for activities or sports. My father helped dig the cellar for that old main building with the team horses. That's all I know about it. He was a contractor, was he? No, he was a farmer and he had one of them, well, you wouldn't know what it was. I might. He had one of them scoops and they'd hook the horses on and dig the dirt out, she knows. He like helped, the grandfather had one. He helped yeah. dig the cellar with that. That was about all I know. That's I went quite up a claim there. to fame, though. Hmm? That, that's quite a claim to fame, though. Yeah. <laughs> Not too many people can say that. That building's still there. It's been on fire and everything else, hasn't it? Yeah. It's a shame, though, that building, uh, when I came to Cortland, I, I was so annoyed that they plunked that Miller administration building down right in front of that yep. beautiful building. But why would you hide that beautiful building? Yep, that, that building that started place. the college. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, well. Well, you know how they got the college up there, don't you? What happened, don't you? The fire, right? The city had the insurance on the college and when it was down on the, by the courthouse there. And they would give it to them, the money to them, to build the college, but they had to give anybody in Cortland County free tuition. And it was like that until the state took over, remember? Mm. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Until Gee, the yeah. state came in and says this is a state university, then that stopped. Wow, that's too bad. Never, so, I never heard that. No, yep. I didn't either. That's true. Oh, I believe you. You've got a good memory. <laughs> that's what everybody says. Yeah. I remember too many things in down there. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us? Any? I don't know. I just. Thing that I remember is all, I don't know. What do I remember? <laughs> it sounds like you've had a really interesting life here in Cortland. You've seen well, I had a good family. Mm -hmm. Uncle Jesse Graham was my uncle. He was a first civil service man at the courthouse. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. I appreciate that. Yes, thank you. You got me into this. I'm glad. I'm glad she did. It was really, really interesting.